High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello everyone and welcome to Overtime. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Reagan Holgate. And I'm Scott Lover. We have reached week nine of Overtime, our final show for the season, but we're excited about how we are going to finish up tonight. We have highlights of two great boys sectional championship games, plus reaction from the players. I'll bring you our spotlight story on Byron's Ryan Tucker just a little later. We'll also look back at a historic season for high scoring games by players and a season of scoring records being shattered. A couple weeks ago here, we told you that our picks to click in the postseason this year were the Byron boys and the Pecatonica boys, and those picks turned out to be right on the money, Scott. And they were two of the final three local teams still standing going into tonight. The third team was the Eastland Cougars, and they took on Pecatonica and the Class 1A River Ridge sectional. It's our Gillies Heating and Air Conditioning Game of the Week. Now, Eastland has won several sectional championships over the years. Pectonica was going for its first sectional championship tonight in front of a full house at River Ridge. Cougars got a couple early buckets from senior Trevor Jansen, both of them threes. Cooper Hoffman had a strong first half with 10 points and that and one. Brody Black gonna throw in a three for the Indians here. Peck then firing up another three, but it's an air ball. However, Jackson Diedrich grabs it and lays it in. Adam Allwender tacks for the Cougars. He'll feed Tanner Stern, and that's a lay-in. Hoffman then drives, but check out this incredible block by super sophomore Parker Crowley. Those two guys were up there. Diedrich, who was huge tonight, is going to knock down one of his three three balls in the first half. He had an 18-point game. Tyler Bird came off the bench, gave Peck a big boost in the second quarter when he scored seven points. Hoffman's going to drain a three right before halftime, and that made his dad happy. Peck led by 15 at the break. They went up by 18 early in the third, but the Ian Eastland folk stands for effort, and the Cougars brought it on defense. Allwinder, the steal, the score. And with time winding down in the third, Allwinder, another steal, and another score. How about Allwinder again? A steal, the basket, and this time, and one to go with it, and the Eastland Cougar was a feeling it. How about another steal? This time by Krogman. Yep, he's going to score too. And the Cougars just kept coming. And then it's Jansen gets a steal. He's going to score, and the Cougars cut that 18-point deficit to only four. But then Hoffman drives. Doesn't get the bucket, but he draws the foul, and he made both of his free throws. And then Diedrich stepped to the line, and he buried a couple free throws. And Pecatonica hung on to win it 60 to 50. The Indians celebrate the school's first sectional championship in boys basketball. And they pick up their 31st win, which is a school record. It's awesome. I mean, this team's worked, worked their butts off all year. Uh, I mean, we could tell by some, even summer league we're dominating. I mean, I think we kind of expected it, but it's reality now. What's it like? to cut the nets and watch your teammates do the same right now as you guys made school history. It feels great, you know. Uh, we've never done this in school history. It just feels great, you know, that we're part of something. Happy for the community, as you can hear. Uh, you know, they're, they're super excited and we have a great group of kids, great families, great administration, and I, I'm just happy for all of them more so than anybody. So now it is on to the NIU Class 1A Super Sectional Monday night for Pecatonica. The Indians will play Aurora Christian. These two teams met December 30th at the State Farm Classic and Normal. What a game that was. Aurora Christian won in overtime. That game Monday now going to tip off at 6 o'clock. It's an early start because there will also be a 4A super sectional game played there at 730. Well, the other local team trying to advance tonight from the Sweet 16 to the Elite 8 was the Byron Tigers in Class 2A. They ran away from their first three postseason opponents. Tonight at the Mendota sectional, the Tigers faced the Princeton Tigers, a team Byron defeated by 15 points a month, ag a month ago. Princeton's record was only 17-15 and 15 coming into this game. They knocked off Rockford Christian on Tuesday night, and it was, of course, a battle of the Tigers in this one. And Princeton came out firing their big center. Noah Laporte was tough to slow down in the paint. There he goes with the offensive board and the putback slam. 
Byron was down six, but then comes Casey Newton flying in for the steal and an easy finish on the other end. The big focus for Byron had to be rebounding the ball, and they made a push on the defensive end. Jack Hively with a takeaway and a dunk to finish it off. He had 16 tonight. Another steal here for the good guys, and they have Ryan Tucker down court who goes for the reverse, and the Tigers are cooking with gas, folks. The defensive effort in the second quarter was honestly just crazy to watch. Newton again here going to force a turnover, and Tucker has another easy two-point basket on the board. But hey, here comes Princeton again. First driving effort is no good, but Laporte is there for another putback dunk. Then with just seconds left until the half, Hively feeds it to Tucker, who reaches the rim at the buzzer. Byron led by one at the break, and the fans were absolutely loving it because the Tucker tear was about to begin. Here he goes flying to the hoop with the bank shot. Then he's going to add another fast break bucket right here. The Tigers were rolling in the second half. They held Princeton to just four points in the third quarter. And how about this Hively with a backwards pass to Tucker under the hoop to keep pouring it on. Tucker finished the night with 26 points and the Byron Tigers roar to a sectional championship win 59 to 43 the final their first title in 17 years. The number one thing was rebounds rebounds they were killing us on the boards and start the second half we started boxing out putting away 23 he was killing us. And we shut him down in the second half. I think that's what won us our game. I mean, I haven't been in a lot of playoff games. We have a lot of last year regional championship loss, the year before that regional semifinal loss. So to be able to play in a huge game like this and produce like that, it means a lot. It's great for our basketball program to experience some success, you know, with our football team being so good. But it's just a great senior class, a great group of kids that bought in five years ago to what we were doing. And it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to coach. Yeah, I mean, this is the best team of boys I've ever played with, and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. All right, so here's what's next for the Byron Tigers. They'll play at the 2A Sterling Super Sectional Monday night. They'll face Chicago Latin, which is 21 and 10. That game will start at 7 o'clock. All right, coming up in a bit, I'll have more on Byron's leading scorer, Ryan Tucker, in our spotlight segment. But up next, this has been the season of scoring records being shattered. We're going to look back at the young men and women who made history at their schools. You're watching Overtime. Every basketball season has its milestone moments and record achievements, but Scott, this season was <laughs> off the charts for both our girls and our boys. I cannot remember anything remotely close to what we witnessed this season. Almost every night it seemed there was at least one player who reached the 1,000 point mark for his or her career. And there was one boys game between Polo and Eastland where each team had a player reach 1,000 yeah. points in that same game. And there were several school scoring records that were shattered. Here's a look back. Maybe only a couple times per season when we see a player in top 40 points in a game. This season, the 40-point club was much larger. South Beloit's Ross Robertson led the way when he scored 47 points December 12th against Schaumburg Christian. He also grabbed 25 rebounds that game. Robertson also scored 40 points in another game against Dakota in January. Sterling Newman's Lucas Simpson also went off for 45 points in a game against Orion December 30th. Lutheran fans will never forget Vontez Dent firing in 42 points against rival Rockford Christian on February 14th. Three of those points came on a last second shot in regulation that sent the game into overtime. Byron's Ryan Tucker poured in 41 points against Rochelle February 14th. Auburn's Raheem Chaney also scored 41 February 10th against Tonaniga. That set an Auburn school record. Christian Cummings of Rockford Christian hit 40 points at Marengo's EC Nichols tournament in a game against McHenry. Pecatonica's Mason Peterson just missed 40 when he scored 39 points at the Eastland Holiday Tournament against South Beloit. For the girls, Stillman Valley's Taylor Davidson poured in a school record 41 points in the season opener in Stockton. Davidson also had a 39-point game late in the season at Rockford Lutheran. Speaking of Lutheran, Crusaders sophomore Soraya Parker scored 40 points in the game right before Christmas against Aurora Central Catholic. Byron's Macy Girl Herring just missed 40 points when she scored 39 against Rockford Christian in the regional tournament. Same with Belvedere's Emma Pearson. She scored 39 points against Jefferson in a game in December. Now for those school records. Lena Winslow senior Grace Grosinger became Lee Wynn's all-time scorer, breaking Jessica Yeager's record. 
Davidson set Stone Valley records for points in a season and points in a career. And she still has another full season to go. Emma Pearson set Belvedere's single season scoring record for points, breaking a mark that had been held by the great Amanda Levins. Since Pearson also has another season to go, she'll have a shot at tapping 2,000 career points and topping Levin's career scoring record. Elena Rager became Pacatonica's all-time scoring leader this season, and she's only a junior. Soraya Parker went over the 1,000 point mark in the middle of this season, and she's only a sophomore, folks, so she'll likely blast well past 2,000 points before she's finished at Lutheran. And how many points might current Aquin freshman Peyton London score before her high school days are done? She averaged 21 points per game this season, averaged that out over three more years, and we'll need a bigger calculator to add them up. Back to the guys, Darius Harrington set a single season scoring record at Dixon, and he's only a junior. Sterling Newman's Lucas Simpson became his school's all-time scorer this season, going over 2,000 points. Ryan Tucker became Byron's all-time leading scorer with more than 1,300 points back on February 9th, breaking a record that had stood since 1956. And then there's Ross Robertson again. He broke Peter Scalia's career scoring record that had stood for almost 40 years. Robertson has already blown past the 2,000 point mark, and he still has another year to go with the Sobos. All right, now I don't see every box score from every game, but I don't miss too many. But if I missed a couple 40 point games in there, <laughs> or if I forgot about a scoring record that was set, I do apologize. But now you kind of have an idea what this season was like. Yeah, just absolutely incredible. All right, we've got more than anything. Uh, simply have some talented basketball players here in the Rockford area. They certainly kept us busy trying to get their games this season when, you know, they were setting all those records. But next season, we could see more of the same, obviously. All right, in just a bit, we're going to look back at some snapshots this season. But up next, I'll introduce you to one of those record-setting scorers this season, Byron's Ryan Tucker, and another special person he shares the sidelines with. Well, we've already mentioned him quite a bit tonight. Now it's time to get a glimpse into a different side of Byron's Ryan Tucker. It's been a special year for a lot of reasons, but more so because of who he's had next to him on the sidelines. It's our final Overtime Spotlight segment brought to you by Benchmark Exteriors. As we grew older, he started to catch me. I feel like basketball has always been a part of my life with my brother playing and my dad playing. Ryan Tucker remembers always watching from the stands as his older brother Zach repped the Byron varsity jersey. I was on the freshman team. I wasn't even on JV or varsity. You could say he played with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. I kind of use that as motivation throughout my career as like you didn't make the JV team like you got some work to do. So I think that really helped me get to the next level. He made a huge jump, I thought, from his freshman to his sophomore year. Now fast forward to his senior year, Ryan is averaging around 22 points and seven rebounds a game as Byron's leading scorer. I've developed my game to where I am a three-way scorer where I can go shoot a mid-range, you know, go to the hoop or shoot a three, and I think that's made it tough to guard. And there's been one special person on the sidelines cheering him on the entire way. Hey, Ryan! I think as we grew older, we kind of realized, like, this is my brother. Like, I mean, we're going to do everything together. He's my best friend. His older brother, Zach, played college basketball for two years at Dubuque before coming home. And now he's one of Byron's assistant coaches. I like it. I think I get on him pretty well. I know how to fire him up. I don't know how much he likes it, but it's, it's awesome. He's been my biggest motivator for everything, whether we're just, like, in the backyard or front yard shooting hoops or, I mean, playing video games. It's always a competition between us. and. I'm always trying to be better than him, and he's trying to be better than me. But their relationship goes beyond the competition. At the end of the day, they just want to see each other succeed. Uh, I can't really even describe it. Um, I knew yeah, he would be good. I knew he would probably be better than me, but I never thought it would be this like to this extreme. But to show how he's put in the work and how everything's kind of paid off is super cool. That was one of the main reasons Zach decided to come home, so he could spend more time with his family and watch Ryan finish out high school. See his senior year, see what he does. Um, it's awesome that I can come and coach and not just watch from the bleachers during the game. So being with him more, I think our relationship has grown even more. 
And Zach has been a witness for some amazing moments so far this season. First, he watched Ryan score his 1,000th career point, then become Byron's all-time leading scorer. Leading up to those games, I kind of knew where he is at, and I never kind of told him just because I didn't want him to know and trying to like to score points is more about like the team and the victory. But um, yeah, just super emotional and just seeing him, all his success paid off and all the hard work is kind of cool. But of course, it wouldn't be right if the Tigers didn't at least get on Zach a little bit when it comes to just how good his little bro is. We do like to give Zach a lot of junk about Ryan being better than him. He knows he's better than him. <laughs> yeah, um, Quinn, Quinn never lets me uh, hear it down. Um, whether it's golf or basketball, he's, he's always right there in my ear letting him know that my little brother's better than me. <laughs> Most of us would view it as pressure to be the best, to be better than the ones who came before you, but not Ryan. I'd say a lot of it is just a privilege. A privilege to play for the Byron Tigers, to take the court in front of massive crowds of orange and black, and to play on a team where he now gets to share in all of his success with his big brother. I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. Like, he's helped me so much, because he wants to see me succeed. And when I see that, it's just like, I, I couldn't ask for more of them. And Ryan will be following in his brother's footsteps as he recently committed to play basketball next year at Benedictine University. We're excited to see what he's going to do at that next level. But the Tigers, they're not done yet. Yeah, we'll look at some girls All-State picks ne next after the break. Right now, here's one of our basketball flashbacks to a superb scoring night and postseason play by a former Winnebago Indian. It was February of 2006, Winnebago played Lutheran in a regional championship game at Pacatonica. This was Devin Balwinkle's senior season for Bago, and on this night, in a tight game, he put his team on his shoulders and carried it. Balwinkle erupted to score 51 of Winnebago's 72 points. At one stretch, he scored 32 consecutive points for his team. Winnebago edged Lutheran 72-68. Two of the Nick 10 standout girls basketball players have received one of the highest honors they could get. Boylan's Elias Barza and Belvedere's Emma Pearson earned All-State recognition this week from the media in Illinois. As Barza is a senior, she was named to the Class 3A All-State second team. The 6'2 center averaged 19 points and 11 rebounds per game. She helped the Lady Titans to 25 wins. She'll continue her career in college at the D1 level next season at Denver. Now Pearson, a junior guard for Belvedere, received All-State honorable mention in Class 3A. She averaged more than 22 points, 7 rebounds, and four steals per game. Pearson also set Belvedere's single season scoring record. In class 2A, Stillman's Taylor Davidson made the All-State first team. She was so strong down the stretch this season. Her Stillman Valley teammate Maya Jansen earned honorable mention All-State. And Byron sophomore Macy Girl Herring also earned honorable mention in 2A. In class 1A, three girls made the All-State second team. Whitney Sullivan of Orangeville, Elena Rager of Pacatonica, and Peyton London of Aquin. Grace Grosinger of Lena Winslow and Soraya Parker of Rockford Lutheran earned honorable mention. So congratulations to all the girls. Well, the basketball season starts in mid-November, runs here through the start of March. It's a long stretch, so so many things happen. Yeah, and we thought we'd, you know, show you some snapshots from the action and help tell the story of the season.
Yeah, what a season. We're going to miss some of those players a lot next year, but so much talent still returning. And we know everybody's going to be working hard through the spring and summer months to get ready for next season. We'll be right back. Now, if you want another look at this entire show or some of the highlights or feature stories, you'll be able to find those shortly at mystateline.com. That does it for not only this episode, but for this season of Overtime. Thanks for joining us. Good night and enjoy your weekend.